you know, maybe a few people from the passing of WordPress uh, Ada. And I was just, uh, I'm an introvert too, and I'd rather just, you know, be by the wallpaper and not engage. But it was fascinating to see all these people come together and talk about WordPress, and it just felt comfortable. Not like I'm out of my element. I felt I was in my element. And I slowly got, over the years, got to know people, and then I was brave enough to submit a talk, and now I've been talking about eight times at different word camps. And when I show up at a word camp now, it's like, hey, hey, it's nice to see you, good to see you, that sort of thing. And I was one of the organizers last year. So it was wonderful to be a part of it, and I feel that is a success, that I got over my you know, being shy, I mean, I'm still shy. <laughs> At least I feel I'm comfortable here and I have a home. And as for uh, my weakness, um, <laughs> I think I overanalyze things and I don't get off my duff to do something that I'm passionate about. I overthink it. And a lot of projects that I could have started years ago, I'm trying to start now. So, that's, that's my story. So I hate to piggyback off of Amber, but um, one of, I would say, my biggest successes is the same, um, learning to overcome my introvert ways and speak in public. Um, so this is actually my third time speaking at a work camp. And um, it's definitely not something that's easy to do, but um, I feel like it's important because you know, you're able to share your knowledge with someone who maybe doesn't know um, how to do the things that you've done. And so I think it um, humanizes the community a little bit and it reminds everyone that we all have a starting place. Um, so I, I definitely feel like my biggest struggle was finding my place within the community and feeling like, you know, am I really an asset or uh, do I actually have something to offer and learning um, that even though I'm not a developer, I still have a place within the community. Inclusive and not just for women and not just 
for like young women who are just coming out of college and everything, but for everybody because we want to, I guess that whole love to all type of mantra is how can we just make it a better space for everybody going on and is there any advice you wish that you would be given when you join the WordPress community? I think I'll just go with my story how I started. I had been working with WordPress for a few years and I don't know why, I never heard of a WordPress meetup until a few years later and it was just down the street. And, and it was a small group, uh, but it was low-key. Uh, Alex Vasquez, if you know him, he, he run, still runs the group to this day. He was a wonderful organizer, very inclusive, and very considerate. And this is what got me started in the community and how I felt I flourished. And I urge people who are organizers to continue with that. And a lot of you are. I, I haven't met a single organizer yet who's been um, not. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Uh, but just something that came up on Twitter that I read that a lot of young women who are starting out, they're coming to these meetings, and I don't know if this has ever happened in a WordPress meetup, or, but it has happened in different tech meetups, where they'll come and they meet up with other people, and they're greeted with, oh, hey, how you doing? Maybe having a drink later. And all of a sudden it turns into a pickup, and they're not there for that. They're there to share information. And this is just something to keep in the back of your mind. If you see somebody new, welcome them, include them, talk to them, and engage. But don't think, you know, that something will happen later. <laughs> Maybe, you never know. But I'm not going to rule that out. But don't make that the very first thing when you see somebody. So that's, that's mine. So if I remember correctly, the question was, um, how do you um, start your place in the community? It's like, how do you get involved and how do you get involved? And yeah. Is there any advice that you wish you'd been given when you first uh, got involved? Got it, okay. Um, so again, as a content creator, I would say that um, the hardest part for me, again, was not being a developer. And um, I think that the community, like, like Amber said, is very welcoming um, and has done a great job of, of including more people. But I feel like, um, groups like Women Who WP and, and Black Girls Code and all these other groups that uh, really cater to, to women and um, people of different communities, even accessible groups, um, have really done a good job of bringing women back to the forefront and making them feel comfortable in a space that has been predominantly run by men. Uh, so I think that it's important, um, again, to to open up your arms, if you will, not literally, but uh, figuratively open your arms to new people and figure out what they do and figure out a way to connect with them on a personal level. Uh, I think human connection, excuse me, does wonders at, um, at really helping people succeed. So make a connection with someone other than you know small talk. Ask them what their dreams are, what they're aspiring to work towards, and figure out if you can help them. And I think in helping them, you're also helping yourself because you're able to um, to maybe flex a new a new muscle that you haven't used in a while, or uh, to find something that you're passionate about that you didn't know about. So I would say for me, um, the hardest part, something I wish I had known, um, would be that that these existed before. You know, like that uh, meetups or anything. I did a lot of meetups before. I've done SEO meetups. I've done um, entrepreneur meetups and freelance meetups, and never really WordPress. Even though I worked in WordPress, you know, as a blogger. I didn't really think this is something I should seek out, right? And um, when I started at Bluehost, I had never been a part of the community. I had never been um, focused on WordPress as my source, not just the place where I actually publish content, but the place where I talk about the thing that I actually talk about in the content. Um, so I think I, I wish that I had um, been told that it's okay and that uh, I had I had really taken that advice and said, you know, I'm going to run with this, and I did. Don't, don't get me wrong, I did uh, run with it and teach myself as much as I could and talk to people. But I, uh, I wish I had been told it's okay, and you're going to learn just like everyone else, and it's a process. But 
that you just have to go with it, you know, and really just just find your place and um, and move forward from there. So the question, the question. <laughs> no, I'm going to say we're listening. I'm going to mention like budget. So. <laughs> Uh, how to make someone new welcoming, or how a new person can actually integrate themselves. Exactly. Okay. I just feel welcoming as well. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, as far as the WordPress community goes, um, I have never met a more homogeneously kind group of people, <laughs> and that that is so easily accessible, and that you are so eager to share what they know, and I'm also people here who are eager to learn things. Because then when you're sharing with them, then you get the feedback that they're really interested in what you have to share. And it felt like it was summer camp or something. Like when I came back home from my first um, word camp, I was so excited that there were so many people that got all giddy when they were talking about custom post types or something like that. <laughs> From the moment I showed up at the speaker dinner, like, and I knew no one, I was easily able to just glide in. And as far as uh, as a newcomer or welcoming, welcoming, welcoming people, <laughs> um, like I said, that there, I don't think there's a problem with that in the WordPress community. I think sometimes people show up and they're a little intimidated because they might have heard or gone to another tech conference and there's kind of a clickish nature in some of those, and I'm just going on um, hearsay, because I've only been to word camps, <laughs> so if I'm accurate, let me know. Um, also, what I like about this too, if you're a newcomer and you see someone here, and the only time you've seen their name was when you were like starry-eyed and you landed on Pippin's plugin site, and you was like, you're like, oh my god, he's here in some of these, go talk to him, he'll talk to you. And Chris Lima and all these people, you get an opportunity to talk to what are called superstars, rock stars in the WordPress community, and they're so open with sharing. So I, I don't have any complaints about this community at all. So. Yeah, I'll second that about talking to like, the superstars. Uh, when I was in Seattle last year, I got to talk to Morton. And uh, almost everybody who's in there knows Morton. And he's such a nice guy. And we ended up not even talking just about WordPress. We ended up talking about the passion that we both have. It's called events. So definitely just talk to people, whether they're the superstars or there's somebody who is attending a work camp for the first time and have no clue what they're getting into. Now, I just have one more question for now before I open it up to the audience. Is just for fun, what would you say? Because um, all of us have been to work camps before. This is, I guess, our first rodeo. Is um, what has been your best experience at a work camp? Mine, I would have to say, is two of them. My first one was Montreal last year. Um, after the speaker dinner, uh, Carl Alexander, who is, I believe, your speaker wrangler that year. This, we decided to have WordPress karaoke uh, afterwards. And so we went out to this place, and it was a fully bilingual, francophone and anglophone thing, and I'm the type of person to go to bed at 10 p.m. I was out till 1.30 a.m., and it was one of the best times in my life with them. And the second one would be uh, WordCamp Seattle last year. Is uh, We ran the Women in WordPress panel there, and the reception was amazing in that we went to kind of like a green room afterwards to continue the conversation. And we had to miss the last two sessions of the day just because we were engaging in real meaningful conversation. And I'll take that any day over just trying to get in all your sessions. Um, as for uh, my experience, uh, the one that pops into my, into my mind uh, was last year uh, here at uh, the LA WordCamp. And it was the worst day and the best day. And you're thinking, what? Rain worse, what happened? Nothing here, that was bad. Um, unfortunately, we had a speaker who couldn't make it, and at the last minute, I filled in. 
I had my slides that I threw together, and it was a wonderful talk in the fact, I've talked before this, but it was wonderful in the fact that the reception I got, the questions I got, the engagement, I mean, we probably could have gone on for another hour just talking about the topic. It was about branding, by the way. And it was like, wow, I hardly put any time on these slides, and I'm getting a lot of feedback, positive feedback on this. And it felt good because that was the day my dog was being put down. <laughs> and I, I was really bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't leave from a clean here. Um, so I had that in the back of my mind. Oh, this was all going on. And nobody knew it. I didn't tell anybody. But it meant a lot to me. I mean, if I had told somebody, they, they would have you know, reacted as you are. But, uh, but it just it felt good and it made me feel really better that I was doing the right thing. Well, for my dog, it's <laughs> doing the right thing, being on stage and talking to the audience and engaging. So, I'll pass it on. Love you, Amber. <laughs> I'm going to say this really quick. Don't ever apologize for your feelings. They're valid and everyone has the right to do that. Um, so my best experience at WordCamp was actually my first WordCamp at uh, WordCamp Phoenix. And um, I love that camp a lot. And it's still one of my favorites just because the community was so open and the organizers were completely, um, they immersed me completely into the community and um, they were so welcoming and figuring out how they could help me uh, succeed and encourage me to actually apply to speak, which I did. Um, and that was actually the first place I spoke as well. Um, so I would say that that, that camp stands out to me a lot um, because it was my first experience and my first experience speaking. Um, and, you know, I think, I don't know if, if many of you plan on going to the after party, but I would highly suggest it just because um, those are really fun. They're a lot of fun and it's a really good opportunity um, to, I will, I will say kind of relax from all the stuff you learn <laughs> during the day uh, because sometimes it's overwhelming and you're in learning mode and you need to work the other side of your brain and, and have a human connection and uh, talk to people and you'll meet really good friends. I've met people that I still keep in contact with uh, personally from, uh, from camps that I would not have met at camp but met at the after party. Um, so I would say that those, those types of after parties are, are great. There's food, there are drinks, there are good conversation, good music, games, um, all types of things. So I would highly suggest that you uh, attend if you can. If not this one, then uh, the next one that you go to. Um, and really, really have an immersive experience in, uh, in work camps. Okay, my, one of my experiences has to mirror karaoke, of course. <laughs> Orange County, okay. <laughs> Orange County and karaoke. Um, that is, the, it's a blast. Um, last year was actually my favorite, or this, this year actually. Um, I, I, I always sing. That woman sings. That woman uh, a year ago didn't sing for the first time and then I brought the house down. Bridget, right here. <laughs> So that's called a unicorn. So I had a unicorn headdress, 
and all my sweats had unicorns in it. And I remember a guy coming in the room and saw me standing there and he's like, all right. And I'm like, I see you on the playa. No. <laughs> and then afterwards on lunch, at lunch, um, I was the, like, the character that people took pictures with. And someone here who has not been over camp in three years, the last one was that that one told me his son still likes the picture of the unicorn lady. Awesome. So, um, in keeping in mind time, I'm going to open it up now to um, questions. And if you like, don't be shy. Just uh, raise your hand so I can see and speak up. And for the sake of WordPress.tv, I will be rephrasing your questions so everybody can hear because we don't have a mic to pass around. So, does anybody have any question for any for all four of us for any one of us in particular? And like I said, don't be shy. And if you don't have any now. We're around all weekend? Yeah, over there. I'm not shy. Um, uh, I guess my thing is, is I'm very brand new to all of this. And although I've de uh, designed websites on web WordPress using templates and um, I, I manage content and I'm really good at writing, I have a writing business. But I, I think what impacted me is, is you said that you try to make sure that you focus on content and not developing and I guess there was a tendency to say oh look at all this stuff I could do so I, I guess I want to know how I can find the balance and where the heck do I begin because I mean I sat next next to some awesome women and they were just like oh yeah I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm like I have no idea what they're talking about so I just want to get on the right path and make sure I don't try to do too much or yeah so the question was um, as somebody new the balance of what to do with WordPress and where to begin. Um, my personal advice is don't try to do it all. There are people who are developers who can't design on a paper bag. Hi. And um, <laughs> there are people who um, are mar amazing marketers and designers but haven't touched a lick of code. So find what your passion is and what you're good at and team up with other people. And if you want to really learn about it, go to make.wordpress.org uh, and there's multiple teams with WordPress. There's the community team, the marketing team, there's the rest. And there's the core team, plugins team. It, like, it's all online and I'm part of the community team, so ask around. There's probably a rep for almost all the teams around the camp here this week, and so just ask find somebody to help mentor you into it and again don't try and do it all because you'll be overwhelmed find your passion find your strength and run with it you know you have anything um, so i would say to set small actionable goals um i use asana you can use trello whatever um, project management tool you want and um, set deadlines for yourself to finish one thing. Um, I find that checking something off your list makes you feel um, like you've accomplished something and you don't have that feeling of guilt like, oh, you know, I've been working on this for six months and I have nothing to show for it. You can look back at that and say, you know, hey, I've actually checked off six things and maybe it took me a week or two weeks or three weeks, but it actually got done. Um, so I would say the first piece is to start. Um, don't say I have to have it all figured out. Just start with one piece, check that off. Start another one and check that off. Um, and I think that you'll find that you feel more empowered with it and you won't feel, um, like how you said, you're, you're sitting next to your friends who've done all these things and you feel like you haven't. Um, then you can say, hey, I haven't finished it all. I'm still on my way, but this is what I've accomplished so far. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, one thing that I know is that you're never going to get to the end of it. It's always going to be learning something. And when you feel like you got it all, then you're going to be dead. <laughs> Nobody's going to hire you. Because I've met those people, like, oh, I got this. I'm like, but you're using tables for the layout. You know, and it's like, things like that. And they're like, but, or I'm all trying to do the Tangled CSS thing, and it's been around for 10 years. And now we're all trying to explain to them, and they're like looking at horse and buggy, trying to put wheels on it. You know, and it's like, so you, 
you, it's all, it's just an adventure and experience. Like, you just, you're sitting between two people, I don't know if you know them, but they have something. I met this wonderful one. She's probably already shared something for you, to you, yeah. that you already absorbed, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you put too much on, I'm not there yet, or I don't know enough, then you're not going to be open for what you're going to get. So, you're fine. <laughs> That's what we're trying to say. <laughs> Yeah, that's just something I want to reiterate, and not just for the WordPress world, is always be learning. Um, as I mentioned in my intro, I'm a martial artist. Um, I'm not trying to brag, but I'm a third degree black belt. I've been doing karate for 11 years, and so I always encourage my students at the dojo to be learning and to just keep doing that. And I think I have another question here in the front. Um, I just have a question. I mean, what advice would you give to to like a freelancer who has some experience in development is currently looking for a full-time position to get started for her as a web developer. So the advice would be for a freelancer who has experience but is looking to, I guess, join a I was 
I'm a graphic designer. I went to school for this. I should be showing my work, and I wasn't. And it wasn't until I got finally got off my duff about it and showed my work and asked questions and said, is this working right, that sort of thing, then people get the idea, oh, hey, that looks pretty good. She would be good for this other project. And that's how I was able to pick up work. And also, if, if you need to show your portfolio and be out there and on social media as well, with your website as well. And if you don't have enough in your portfolio, create a project and just say, this is what I'm passionate about and do that. And along with what I say. <laughs> All right, so we have about 10 minutes left, so we have room for one or two more questions. So, Jamie? Um, so work camps are a really awesome way to connect with people and see what everyone is doing, um, but they're once a year. Um, do you have any uh, resources or uh, examples of ways that you can stay connected with the community and um, maybe get more involved uh, over the rest of the year? Yeah, so the question was for any resources or advice to get involved with your um, community outside of the WordPress, like just the one WordCamp once a year. Meetups. Meetups usually are once a month. Go to there. A lot of the WordPress communities have Slack channels or Facebook groups or a Twitter hashtag. And so social media is powerful. So I would tie into that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I was going to say Twitter as well, or Facebook, or social media in general, um, just because you can see what other people are doing. But um, also maybe just find, or when you, if you can go to a meetup, um, then find someone in the group uh, that you can connect with going uh, forward. So, for example, you know, I can't necessarily go to meetups in the evenings a lot. Um, so I, you know, you can meet someone and then say, hey, let's keep in touch on our different projects. Um, and then, if you can't go to meetups at all, uh, I would say maybe think about starting a meetup. If you're in a city that doesn't have one, um, maybe start one and um, see if that can take off. Start a WordCamp if you want to. Um, and see, you know, where you can go from there if you're not, uh, for example, some people live outside of LA and maybe there's not a meetup there or outside of whatever city you live in. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, just one meetup in the whole state. So feel free to, to create. <laughs> Um, also, I don't know where you're located, but I just found it really weird that you said once a year because I'm pretty sure most of us in this room go to more than one. <laughs> and Orange County is like, that's in the backyard. Um, oh, you're in Portland. Okay, uh, there's probably a, a pocket of them there too. Seattle. Yeah, yeah, don't do this just once a year. Go to as many as possible. Come find your vacation around this. <laughs> Identify your boundaries, right? Um, and I think that you identify boundaries by your gut. 
um, your gut tells you if you're uncomfortable with something, and you will feel it. Like you will literally feel your stomach kind of drop and say, oh, this doesn't feel good. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it, right? I think, um, well, don't lose your job if you know if you have to do a project you don't want to do, just don't do that. But um, my point is, <laughs> my point is, I guess, um, to create your boundaries based on, on how your body's telling you it feels, um, and also allowing people uh, to see what you can do and placing a value on yourself. Me and Bridget actually had a talk about this last night, and um, we kind of both agreed that you know you have to place a value on the work that you do, not just the, the finished project, but also the time that you put into things. Um, and I think that when you value yourself, other people will start to value you. They don't have a choice, right? Because either they're not allowed in your space, or um, or they are allowed in your space and they have to do the thing that you require them to do um, by giving you respect and by giving you um, respect more than anything, really. Uh, they don't have to necessarily like you, but they have to respect you and respect just your space and your boundaries. So I would say follow your gut um, and actually place value on your time, your projects, your energy, and just be really protective of that. Jack, we're pretty much close to time, so we're going to have to wrap it up. So thank you very much for coming.